Let's see if it's time to take your son of dongle out of the drawer. Hello guys! Over the last couple of days I've seen an increased uh, activity notifications from GitHub, the very same thread that I've used back on in October to report my issues with Son of Dongle plus the Zigbee dongle that the Son of released a couple of months ago and the same dongle that I was slightly disappointed due to powering issues. If you want to know more about it and how to flash the firmware, there's a video there in the corner. In this video I'm going to test the latest firmware and see if the reports in that GitHub thread are correct and the firmware is actually usable. I think it's fair to assume that I'm not the only one that have this dongle, mostly because it promises a pretty decent hardware at a very reasonable price of $10.99. By the way, link is in the description below. So uh, it would be a shame if it's, well, still in your drawer. So let's try to find mine and put it to a test with the latest firmware. And since I've been using Electrolamas ZZH, I need to find the correct drawer. Yeah, that's not the one. Currently, the Son of Dongle Plus is on the list of supported devices on Zigbee to MQTT with two different firmwares available. One from the master branch, which is dated in December, and one from the development branch, which is more uh, recent. And I'm going to test both of them to see if uh, it's any better and uh, whether I should recommend it to you right now. The process of flashing your firmware is exactly the same with a small optional change. Thanks to this hack you'll be able to change the firmware and the way the bootloader starts so if you're flashing your uh, Zigbee coordinator very often you won't have to press the button again. Me, I'm going to skip this because let's face it I'm only going to flash my firmware once every couple of months and you know pressing down the button for a couple of seconds before you enter the device into your USB it's not much to ask. Now that everything is set, it's time to connect it to your Raspberry Pi and I would strongly recommend you to use that USB extension lead just to avoid interference. So let's start with temperature sensors. Why? Well, mostly because I'm working actually on version 4 of my DIY smart heating. You can watch all about the version 3 in there. Seriously, it's pretty cool. I'm also working on an article that's going to take all those 10 different brands of sensors that I have at home and comparing them to decide what is the best temperature sensor for Zigbee automation. I hope you're going to stick around that because that video and article is going to be out soon. Anyway, for the last couple of days I've been running that network of my sensors directly with the coordinator without building up my mesh to check the performance. And for the most part I didn't have any problems, with the only thing being uh, Zigbee temperature sensors causing me pairing issues. At first I thought we are going back to disappointing results, however after unpairing everything and starting the pairing process with that Sonoff sensor everything went smoothly and I was able to connect all of them and enjoy the process. But it's not the temperature sensors that everyone's enjoying obviously and we're gonna need some more devices. So let's grab those. What may seem like a Raspad box is in fact a box full of Zigbee devices. Oh by the way, if you're interested in Raspad, a device that will turn your Raspberry Pi 4 into a tablet, I have a video about it here. From that box I've selected another couple of sensors, so I have a IKEA button, again no problem. Same goes for Tuya um, PR sensor, it's a random device, paired perfectly and worked just fine. Even that slightly bizarre Zemi smart controller worked perfectly. And in this box I have a couple of switches which I tested as well, again no problems. So how about some rotor devices or son of switches itself? Well, I have still a Zigbee devices from Sonoff, so I've tested them out, reporting no problems. Lastly, I went for IKEA bulb because why not, it's at the desk. And after quickly pairing it to my coordinator, everything worked beautifully. And even with the Sonoff switches, I didn't have any problems, which left me with two more devices to test. A TRV from Moe's, which I'm going to use to build up my home automation, again the video in the corner, 
and partially supported a thermostat that uses Zigbee, something I'm going to replace my awfully looking um, thermostat at some point. So I know that this point I'll have to tell you one thing, your mileage may vary. While I didn't encounter any serious problems, and the development is still ongoing and people on GitHub are reporting some issues. But as it stands for now, I have no problem recommending Sonoff Dongle Plus as your coordinator if you want to upgrade from CC to 531. If you choose to upgrade into something more premium, like Electrolama, then that's your choice. Obviously, that device is a little bit better supported. But if you don't want to spend all that money and you have 1099 to spare, then you're going to find the link in the description. Finally, I'd like to say big thanks to Cohen and everyone that contributed to fixing that firmware and make it workable on Son of Dongle Plus because a lot of people out there contributed and without their support, we wouldn't be here enjoying new coordinate. So let me know in the comments if the dongle is still in the drawer or are you going to use the new firmware and give it a go. That's it for this video, but if you want to know where's the best Zigbee temperature sensor for home automation, stay tuned. You know how YouTube works, I do not have a posting schedule, so use the tools provided by YouTube to get notification when the next video is out, and I promise it's gonna be cool. As for now, well, you have a social media, get in touch, especially if you have any links, because YouTube actively suspends those, and I don't have access to these comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Take care. Bye.